So, well, welcome to the Essex Junction Trustees Meeting. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And so, uh, Evan, I understand we have a couple of uh, additions in, uh, to the agenda for tonight. Yes, I have an addition to business item. It's the fireworks display permit for the village of Essex Junction's Recreation and Parks Department. Okay. I'd like to make that 5D. Okay. And then at your places, uh, I don't know if it was one meeting ago or two meetings ago, uh, there was a, a mini discussion on landscaping on, around uh, the Firebird Cafe's um, new building. We have a a use agreement with the owner of the parking lot behind it. Right. So there's a um, showing of where landscaping is going to occur and a path that Public Works is installing between our use of the parking lot behind it to Firebird. Okay, thank you. Um, do I hear a motion? Move we approve the agenda as amended. Okay. Second. Okay. Amber seconds. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the amendment is agended. Okay. But the agenda is amended, not the amendment is agended. Oh, you do know what I meant. All right. Um, good. Okay. So I think that's it. So uh, public to be heard. Comments, uh, questions, comments from the public? None. Okay. Um, so we're on to our very first um, business item, which is presentation of proposed amendments to the Village of Essex Junction's comprehensive plan. And is this Robert, you're going well, to make it away. Sure, it's a presentation, just a discussion, really. Yep. Um, we, the, myself and the Planning Commission, have referred to this as Municipal Plan Light. The idea of doing this is so that we have enough time and we overlap with the town's Municipal Plan. So if the powers that be decide we want to merge them, right. that can happen. So really, the changes we made were changes that were mandated by the state or by uh, the Regional Planning Commission. I'll go through a quick list, and I will send everybody an email with this if you haven't received it before. We just updated the data and the maps to make them the most current ones that are available from the state. The energy section, which is section 4.1, it references the Essex Community Enhanced Energy Plan, which was written in collaboration with the town and the CCRPC. The CCRPC really did the, uh, the major work on it. And it's included in the municipal plan. The planning commission wanted it in the municipal plan, not separate. Right. Their experience had been if you go somewhere and you get a plan from a municipality, you go home, you realize that you needed another section. Right. So they'd rather have it all in the one, so it's in a way one stop shopping for people. Gotcha. So they wanted it all to be in there. Okay. Um, section 4.4, there was modifications to the open space, recreation, public health. It's expanded to include discussion of public health. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. Is it industry standard to leave that separate, or shouldn't? Uh, why? I've gone Are through back kind to of the skim the report. Hmm? Are you talking about the energy? No, just the the overall plan and being having health and public health being separate. Is there a reason why those considerations wouldn't be considered in every section? Well, they are considered in every section. It's just this is specific to that. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of these things that flow over into different sections, but they still have their own place. Okay. Somebody's opening up the couple and they want to find something particular. You want to be able to you know, hone okay. in on that rather than draw through the whole thing. Okay. Uh, section 4.5, <clears throat> um, the natural environmental resources, we revised it to align with state forestry requirements. That was really the change there. And the plan was also brought into full compliance with the state flood resilience requirement, which is important for FEMA. That's section 4.6. Uh, the Education and Child Section 4.7 is completely revised to reflect the Essex Westford School District. Uh, previously, it obviously hadn't been that. Uh, the Utilities and Facilitation Section 4.8 was revised to state that Essex Junction's Stormwater Management Permit, Wastewater Collection System, and zoning regulations align with the implementation sections of the Winooski River and Lake Champlain Tactical Basin Plan. In other words, we're aligning everything you know, with our surrounding communities, with the state, and with the region. Want. The housing section, which is 4.9, summarizes the town of Essex and village of Essex Junction housing needs assessment and action plan. Now, the, the village did sponsor VHFA to update uh, 
and what they have on their website. And then I think mostly Darren from the town took it and put it into something that would, that would read better mm -hmm. in the municipal plan. Uh, du Bois and King's five corners design was threaded throughout the plan. Plan references all relevant documents in the 2015 Town of Essex and Village of Essex Junction Bicycle Pedestrian Plan, Raj. The draft 2019 <laughs> Parking Study and the Green Mountain Transit's Next Generation Plan. So we really pulled a lot of things together that have happened since the last time we've done the plan. The Planning Commission needs a meeting between the, tr the trustees July 23rd and your August 13th meeting if the trustees decide to suggest some changes. If you do, that meeting will be August 1st. Planning Commission are hoping that you'll find that this is meets, meets the standard that we started with, which is the municipal light, just to satisfy the powers that be, if you like. So if we apply for grants or anything to the state mm -hmm. or the region, that we can get this. So this is just accept. This means just to accept the plan. You're not expected to have re reviewed it. I believe you all got it by email, probably Dropbox. And if you have any comments, they should come to us by July 12th which is a month away, which will allow time to review, and then if the Planning Commission needs another meeting, they'll have it on August 1st. And your public hearing will be set in 23. And then there'll be a, one more public hearing. So you have two public hearings on tonight's meeting, and your last meeting to, your second to last meeting to accept it and adopt it is August 13th. So there's quite a ways to go. And as I said, the changes are, and I will send this to you if you haven't got it, but it's really section four, so most of the changes. Any questions? No, I'm just gonna make a comment that the comprehensive plan is what kind of informs a lot of our other development. It's sort of the overarching yeah, it's plan. The um, it's the umbrella underneath what you're and, and for anyone out there in the viewing audience who's interested in village center development or why things happen the way they happen and so forth and why, when should the public get involved and make comments, this is the time when you wanna someone has a comment they want might want to come to one of these public hearings absolutely okay and this the, the changes here will be reflected in the next uh, version of the land development code which is the battle by which the planning commission makes decisions on applications okay when is that so probably another <coughs> two years <coughs> generally they're not in sync, in sync with each other which is good actually because you, they, they can be updated more often. And if something happens and it's on the land development code, it's in the municipal plan, you could refer to that as well. You may be even more flexible than what you're trying to do. <clears throat> okay. And you know, we, we do have time to go over this and read it more carefully and ask questions at this. And I will send this coming in. Yep. So I have a, uh, any, uh, any questions, any other questions for Rob? They were good? So I have a, um, the, the idea here, Robin, is that um, the trustees will warn a public hearing for uh, the 23rd, is that correct? Yes. Um, and then we'll take it from there as in the sequence you said. So, um, and hopefully if there are any suggested changes, we get those before that, we get this July 12th. Okay. So we have the time to change them before the second public. All right, so I'll make a, you know, let me, uh, one other, one last thing. I, I noticed you've got some pictures here. Are these, these are not, these are just development pictures. Do you want to show these to us while you're still on, on stage, or is this something coming up on another? Why not? Way? Huh? Why not? Yeah, before I make my motion, why don't you, I think some of us might be interested in seeing these. Uh, and, you know, you might, maybe you could bring them up here, Robin, or, uh, or the should we all come there, chance. or what, what works best? Okay. And what what in particular anything of note that you wanted us yeah. to see? Well, this is you know an aerial view. So this was presented by Blackrock Construction, the planning commission meeting two weeks ago. You're fine. It shows the proposed connector road which opens up all of this property for development. And also, as you can see, it will open this property for development. At the moment, this is a driveway, which goes down here. So you can see the road takes advantage of existing curb cut. 
the driveway. And this is actually quite beneficial for this property owner because what they have to maintain at the moment will become a public road and we will maintain it. So they show a new building here. This is where the sewing machine building is. First thing is that's retired. And that building is hiding out here. <coughs> It's a nice building, but it's... This was already approved by the planning commission. This is part of phase one of what you see there. I'll show you phase two in a second. It's a nice building, but in some ways it could have been built in the 50s or the 60s. It's not, it's not really reflective in my mind of today. So there's some others that really speak, I think, to the history of the village and also the village going forward. Iron scope, here it is. Um, you know, the center of the village is really connected to the railway. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it got a lot of maple syrup in, it dealt with wood products and so on. So the buildings, a lot more flat roof, the metal portions in them. So I think this building, <laughs> it harks to the past and also speaks to the future. This is the building that is along the connector road. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a nice, there's a roadway through here to get you to the parking underneath the building. I think it's very nice when you're walking through a town and there's an opening you can see through to what's behind. So behind this, this will be retail commercial. You can see all these buildings have public spaces around them, which really ties into the municipal plan, past and present. And it really opens up the street. Well, you say where, where on the connector is that? It's um, it's on the face of the connector, left of um, behind the Flanders building. Okay. So it would be here. Okay. So you drive in here, yeah. and then there's another building behind it that's. Here. And then this would be phase two. This building shown here would be phase two. And there's another building that's not on this plan. I'll find another plan that would go here, where the laundromat is. Mm -hmm. It would also be phase two. The plan with this building is, as it's built out the back part, would be a parking garage. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be pretty close to the current Lincoln Inn, right? Well, this is the Lincoln Inn. So, it's, yeah, it's relatively close. But it's a parking garage, which could be three or four stories high. But it won't be seen from the street. It's sort of, it's a wrap building in some ways. So the residential and the commercial wrap around the building. and. The parking for this is underneath the building. It's not underground. And so they, they utilize this parking too. But once this goes in, they'll have more parking than the code or some the urban planning and directories would recommend. Good. So they'll decide you know, whether they want two stories, three stories, four stories, but they have that flexibility. Is that Flanders building going to stay? The Flanders building minute is just going to get recited because there's income from it. So. When the new buildings start bringing in income, then they'll take a second look at the planners building. But it's needed to minute for the property owner just to generate some in cash flow, <clears throat> which is why the laundromat's staying too. But this is 116 apartments. It has to have retail commercial on the entry level because it's still a central district. And we're starting to get to the point where the number of people living here will justify the small businesses investing in space. Nice. Yeah, I didn't expect to do this, but very good. Um, I mean, I, I, the potential for the development of this property here mm -hmm. and uh, no, this, one. this one here. You know, in some ways, um, if you look at the truck roads coming into the village, you could say that Park Street needs the most help. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that it's the one that's getting attention first. I think next will probably be Pearl Street from what used to be the bicycle store. It's my um, nail store going past um, Post Office Square and that's the junction shopping center. Because if you think about all the other streets coming in, you think about Main Street, Lincoln Street, the Maple, they're predominantly residential. But their two streets are really the, the, the commercial retail streets. And then with the village center is the anchor. It starts to work really well. 
And of course the connector road does get bike lanes. And a sidewalk only on one side because the other side's along the railway tracks. Any questions? Thank you, Robin. Okay. Yep. Okay, so to wrap things up, I will make a motion that uh, the trustees warn a public hearing for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. at Lincoln Street, Essex Junction to hear comments on the proposed amendments to, to and re-adoption of the Village of Essex Junction's comprehensive plan and the proposed Essex Community Enhancement Enhanced Energy Plan. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. All right. So we. Can I ask just a quick question? Yes. George, about that. So I guess. Um, we're going to warn, uh, or we're going to have on our agenda at a later time to talk about our comments before that July 12th date. My, my question is, given my involvement in doing this, should I be commenting? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, if, you, if you're asking yeah. for a legal opinion, could you give me a legal I opinion? I couldn't give you one, and I'm not going to try to put one, to, no. put one by you. I guess but maybe the, somebody could look into the only thing it. Is that, I see a conflict. Only, I don't see a conflict of interest because there's no benefit to you personal personally. gain. It's not like you have a vested interest in this personally to gain anything, nor a friend. So it's not. It's yeah. it, it's it's just community wide. It'd be one thing if it pertained to something that you were doing, a business you had, or something you connected some way. Yeah. I don't okay. see any way that it could be construed as being a yeah. conflict of interest. Okay. I, and I would add that uh, you, because of your work with it, you know more about it than the rest of us, and so your comments and insight would be welcome. Yeah, I would appreciate it. Yeah. Having good answers to, uh, yeah. No more than Raj could, could find conflict of interest on boarding on a bike path or anything yeah. that, you know, that. I mean, that's but I, I would say if you feel, if, you, if your opinion is that you think you want to, then I would suggest you contact Evan and contact you know, Claudine and okay. get her opinion. Um, okay, anything else? So we'll move on. Um, so we are going to warn another public hearing uh, to hear comments on the, uh, oh wait a second, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, warn public hearing for the FY E 2020 water sewer budget and rates. That's a slight misnomer, it's just the rates. Yep. Um, do you want to, does someone, does staff want to take the lead on this or do you want me to go through it? Or, yes, uh, no, yeah, I will. I'm take it away, ma'am. Take it away. <clears throat> And I'm not as excited as I usually am. <laughs> but I do want you all to know that Lauren came in and spent the afternoon with us yep. to go through the process because it's a lot more it's involved than it's complicated. just taking the budget and dividing oh, it out yeah. amongst the users. So I'm going to do my best to give you an overview of what we did and how we got to uh, the, the numbers. And then I would hope you can give me some questions and then we'll hear it again. Um, at a public hearing at your next meeting and then the village trustees have a policy that for setting the large user water rates there they will you we will hold two public hearings so there will be another opportunity to, to talk about this it looks like last year we just went straight for a public hearing one um, and I missed that timeline a little bit so you're getting an introduction and then two public hearings but hmm, better to have more than once okay so earlier in the year, um, so at budget day, we went through the water and the sewer and the sanitation budgets as part of the whole general fund budget. And those have already been approved uh, by the trustees as part of the budget process. The water budget overall was a $170,000 or 4.4% increase. That was an 8% increase on the village section of that budget. Percentages get higher as the overall numbers get lower and the Global Foundry's contribution in this water budget takes up a lot of that overall expenditure number. So I know this is probably new mm -hmm. for Amber and Raj both um, and I can send you the budget documents. I didn't think to do that. Some of the factors increasing the water budget was a $50,000 increase to the amount contributed to capital, which is 
a very good way to be, like this this is good financial management we need to keep going that way because when anything breaks in these systems it's very expensive mm -hmm. there was an increase um, to the cost of health insurance and other benefits as a result of a plan level change in the enterprise funds and one of the things that Lauren and I discovered recently was that there was a decrease in the amount that we're expecting to get from the large users and I think that this happens or this is an adjustment that happens most years when we do the final reconciliation in the beginning of June to say what did we expect global boundaries to use over the last 12 months and what did they actually use and then we also take that percentage and we divide it into our unaccounted for water which is very close to zero which is great news, yeah. um, except that brings brings down the amount that they're contributing to the budget. <clears throat> the expenditure budget doesn't change, so if one revenue source goes down, other revenue sources have to go up. All right, that's what I got for water, <laughs> a water uh, budget overview. The sanitation budget and those sewer budget and the wastewater treatment facility budget are not. Co oh, questions. Sorry, it's all right. Large users, and, and I apologize yeah. if these are stupid questions because it's no. like the first time that I've seen any of this. So, yes. um, large users, you say large users, but are, do we have anybody else besides global or is global the only? No, it's, really it's, just global, it's just global, but there's a policy defining a large user as somebody who uses uh, 2.5 million gallons per day. Okay. No, it, more it, it's it's about three, it's, it's okay. more closer to three, two, three point five. Yes. And you don't mind me interjecting. No, please do. <laughs> the, the Global Foundries uses more water than, than the entire rest of Chittenden County combined, mm -hmm. including the city of Burlington. Yeah. Wow. Yes, yes, they use 3.4 million a day. Our policy is anyone who uses two, more than 2.5 is considered a large user. There you go. So if you want to be a large user, there you yeah. go. Okay. Work that <laughs> out you. You. Turn the policy okay. You get a reduced rate. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's included in my condo. Well, I, it's, I want to say it's not a reduced rate. It's a wholesale no, no, they rate. Get a wholesale. Yeah. It's a wholesale. In other words, we the village acts as a pass-through. The Champlain Water District sends us water at whatever yeah. rate per gallon, and that's what we charge Global Foundries. Mm -hmm. There's no not a single penny add-on. Okay. Yeah. And that is a concern of all of Chittenden County, that as Global uses less water everybody else rates have to rise because the cost of water is the same right mm -hmm. regardless of whether they are using it or not because they're getting a wholesale rate have we seen a shift in that and their or downturn okay yes I mean um, it came up last week there was a question with the, the, the uh, representatives from the Champlain water district because they were looking at the last three decades of water usage and um, the, the entire network, sorry to be sound like I know it all, but I just sat, I did, I set the water rates one summer and sat on a water rate committee and learned all this stuff. And some of it was informative. The entire water distribution network for the Champlain Water District was set up for IBM. It was set up to deliver 10 millions of gallons, get, gallons a day to IBM. And they never reached that max. I think the max they ever got to up, was up around 8 million in the late 80s, early 90s. But they had to bond and take out lots of money to build this entire network. Right. That's I think that I still I think they're yeah. still paying that off. Oh, yeah. And uh, when which IBM is, started really losing capacity and shifting business, rates. they saw a real drop in the in, end of the '90s, and everybody every residential rates started going up in order to compensate. Uh, but the, really, the entire network was built for IBM. Now global funding. They have their own wastewater treatment plant? They yes. Do. They pay for that themselves or do they operate that? No. They, they do operate it themselves and they pay for it themselves and they have a state uh, license. And they have the only industrial waste per wastewater permit in the state. It's a special class of permit. Hmm. So the only way they hit our budget is just to pass through? Yes. And that's a one for one, what we buy on their behalf and then what <coughs> we they provide. buy from us. And then there's that large user fee on top of that, which is about $100,000 a year, just shy of that. Sanitation budget and the wastewater treatment facility budgets are a little bit more straightforward because they don't have the global boundaries impact that the water does. The sanitation budget, the expense side, 
um, is up $50,000, which is over 10% because it's only a budget of about $500,000, and that is driven entirely by salaries and health benefits. In this budget, we raise um, a little bit or slightly more in revenue than the expenses in order to contribute to the wastewater treatment facility bond. I only, under, I'm like, in the, in the pond of understanding all of this, I'm in the shallow end. So, <laughs> <laughs> But it's a water analogy, which is really good. <laughs> it was, it was good. Yes. Bonus points. It's a wastewater yeah. pond. That it's a clean water. water. You have your neck in it. It's a clean water. Right. It's, it's a clean, clean water. It's a clean And then the wastewater uh, budget is up $124,000, which is a 6%. Um, increase again. There's an increase in the transfer to capital there, big bucks. An increase in the cost of chemicals um, and maintenance fees, and then, and then it looks like maybe it was a. Never mind. Okay, so back to rate setting. A number of years ago, not too many, I think 2014, the village had um, a water and sewer rate study done, which is awesome to have. What? It was awesome. Yeah, not really. <laughs> it, was, it was painful. I'm it sure was, it was. very awesome, though. It was, it was, it's it was painful fun. to do, but it is good financial. It is. Management. It was a good it thing. It is, to do. and it's great it to have thing. that. It was a good thing to do. Uh, so each of the three funds um, have a combination of fixed rates and variable rates at different percentages, yep. and the percentages are delineated in this study. So in the water fund, um, the rates are divided out. 50-50, uh, so 50% of the revenue in the water fund is raised by fixed rates, and 50% is raised by variable rates. That, coupled with the new number of equivalent units, which we just updated last week, which was a 2% increase, it's a 2% increase in new accounts or an upward shift in commercial accounts whose equivalent units are reallocated every year at the end of the year based on their actual usage and an increase, a 1.65% increase in projected consumption led us to, um, oh, that's the combined sheet. Here's the water sheet. It was a 7.4% increase in the rates. Um, in the water fund, we're talking about 0.0188 cents per cubic foot for usage, and then a 26.86 flat fee per quarter, um, a $217 a year cost. The, me the cover memo has them side by side with the current rates. Um, and I, I noted in the PowerPoint presentation some of the reasons for the increase that I also just talked about. In the wastewater treatment facility, the split between fixed and variable rates is 65% fixed, 35% variable. Uh, can I stop you for a second? Yeah. Do you guys understand fixed versus variable? No, I was actually going to ask that yeah, question. Oh, yeah, okay. Fixed. Yeah. 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 fixed. <laughs> okay. For the most part, fixed is the ability to bring water to here and distribute it. The cost doesn't change by whether you use it or not. It's the cost of the system to bring it from Lake Champlain, regulate it, get it here, and distribute it, plus water meters, plus all that stuff. That's a fixed cost, and plus our personnel. And then the variable side, is mainly usage and any water loss or anything like in that in that side of the equation. Good, right? Good. To understand? Because mm -hmm. we use this jargon, we mm -hmm. live in it every mm -hmm. day. So when people say, why is my water bill so high? I only use, say, a thousand gallons right. a month or 2,000, let's say. That may very well be true, but we have to get it pumped from Lake Champlain we have pipes that have to be maintained, water meters, etc. hydrants that provide you fire suppression capability. That's part of the fixed asset portion of the, of the deal. So you're going to have a fixed, always going to have a fixed, and then if yeah. you don't use any water, you're good. You get your fixed rate, and if you have used water, then you get your usage on top of it, yeah. right? Yeah. That's right. If they're calculated per gallon and don't use much, they're going to be bumped, but if they use a lot... And do with that calculation. Well, then they're going to get hit. They yeah. get hit for their usage and they're yeah. fixed. Right. But we always need the fixed, mm -hmm. no matter what. Right. Exactly. Right. If um, everyone. As a matter of fact, interestingly, our water usage is up a tad. 
Yeah, 1.6%. Um, which is fine. In a lot of places, water usage is actually declining. Now, it might be as a result of the 100 new equivalent units yes. customers. Yes. So. Yeah. We have new so, customers. <laughs> right. <laughs> might be a relationship there. But it, basically what it comes down to, too, is with the efficiencies and cutting back water usage, it's kind of got a double, it's a double-edged sword because you then you have the fixed cost. The fixed costs don't go away, the maintenance and all that. So you're, you're reducing your revenue. So it's a, it's a catch-22. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they're kind of stepped fixed costs, but right. with big, long steps. Right. So at a certain <clears throat> point, some of them would go away, but I think it would, we'd have to go way far back. Oh, and then at a certain point with more and more users and more and more usage, they're going to go up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. another big step. So, okay, that was water. Wastewater um, is a 10% increase in the rate. That is a combination of 6.4% increase in the operating budget, an increase in the percentage of flow to the wastewater treatment facility that is attributable to the village. So the wastewater treatment facility serves the village of Essex Junction, the town of Essex, and the town of Williston. And that somehow gets factored into the amount that's raised by the rates. I have that here on, on Lauren's spreadsheet. There's, Maybe there's, she'll have to come to the public there's hearing. A <laughs> there's a tri-community agreement, and it's also based upon how much capacity each community bought mm -hmm. to start the, the tri-level and how much is being used, plus capital, plus maintenance, plus EPA and Vermont regulations. Yes. Yeah. So you take a, the, the estimated percentage of flows based on the, the last year's average of the three communities, and then you divide up the operating budget by those three percentages, and then each of those communities has to make up that amount. So the town of Wilson and the town of Essex, they just get a monthly bill for a flat amount throughout the year. There's a reconciliation again at the end of the year. The Tri-Town Committee has, over the past number of years, I think since maybe 2012, decided to keep any residual in the wastewater treatment fund to, for um, possibly future rate fluctuations to stabilize uh, any future rate fluctuations that might arise for capital purposes. Because at the end of the year, sometimes the village is paid more than it should have, or Wilson is paid more than it should have based on the actual flows. So, there was a 1.5% increase in the village percentage of flow, and there was a 10% decrease in the anticipated septage revenue, which is when the septic haulers come in and dump their waste directly. And so, expense budget stays the same, some of the revenue items go down, others have to go up. That's the effectiveness. Um, just for, for you and other people, we're not terribly unhappy that we are getting less septic um, because of its strength load becomes very concentrated versus otherwise. It takes a lot more chemicals to deal with that. And so that's one thing we're not terrible, because there's an expense side to, there's a, a expense driven from septic. Second, as Sarah just mentioned, one of our cost drivers is chemicals. It takes chemicals to treat wastewater. And mostly, in de uh, we're dechlorinating, we have to remove phosphorus, and once you get all of that, you end up with a sludge. And, they, and we haul our sludge to a, a farm, local farm, we have a land application. What you really have to do before you get that sludge moved is dewater it. And it takes chemicals to dewater and do things and then make it bond. Mm -hmm. So there's chemicals involved, it's all EPA approved, it's all Vermont approved, but it's a process. So we're always battling what's coming into the plant, how it's being processed, and how much chemicals and energy it takes to process it. And then it has to get land applied. The clean water which is basically drinkable uh, from the time it leaves the plant, goes into the Winooski River and on into Lake Champlain. We are a heavily regulated industry. And when they talk about cleaning up Lake Champlain, 
we are a, a, a faucet into that ecosystem, so we are heavily regulated, especially for phosphorus. Sorry. So I do pay attention at these meetings. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the, the water system, then there's the wastewater treatment facility, and then the sanitation budget is really the collection of the the wastewater to go toward the facility and so that's and because of the tri-town arrangement that's why we have three separate budgets here as opposed to some other communities that may have it all lumped into one or one sewer and one water um, we have this unique arrangement and therefore we have the third pot uh, sanitation budget is 75 percent fixed and 25 percent variable so split there um, similar to the others there's the increase in the operating budget. There's also a slight increase in the amount that the sanitation budget is paying toward the wastewater treatment facility upgrade debt that's been happening year over year as that ramps up. Um, I know we talked about the water, and so the, the increase in this budget is 7.2%. Uh, so equivalent units and customers. In the water fund, um, total equivalent units was up 102, which is 2.2%. And use projected consumption was up just shy of 500,000 cubic feet on the year, which is a 1.65% increase. In wastewater and sanitation, our total customers or equivalent units were only up 75, so you don't have to have both water and sewer. You can just have water. Except you probably, maybe you can just have sewer. Anyway. Yeah, there aren't too many septic systems in the village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> most, and most, most, Villages that have basically a complete system. You may have some outliers, like there could be a farm that is on a septic field that started in the 1870s, and we, we as a community, have not extended the sewer to their. Um, there's probably a handful of properties. But, but you know the PC doesn't allow, they, if someone comes in with an application and says, I'd like to put a septic out back, you go, no, you no. don't. There will be, no, no, be no new ones. Yeah. So the, con the, that's fine. the consumption side on wastewater and sanitation <clears throat> is only up half a percent, about 126,000 cubic feet on the year, um, as opposed to almost the full 500,000. So. The other variables in those two funds didn't increase quite as much. So before I jump into the large user rate, those three slides that I just talked about are going to contribute to a combined overall increase in the rate for residential customers of 8.8%. So we're looking at the average annual cost of $512 a year. Um, this is... It's hefty. It is. It's an increase of $41 per year on a village resident using 120 gallons per day. How, how does that compare to the past 10 years, roughly? Like, what, have, what kind of increases have we seen year over year? That might be a question that I could answer. I'm just curious. For this is big. Okay. Yeah. It's like We'd have to go back through that. I don't have that, or we don't have that. Andy. Be good to know, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Did you I say ten know. years, five years? I'd be curious about ten. Okay. I mean, I, it's, I, mean I think it, it does tend to go up every year, but I don't know if this might. I can't. I don't know if this is a big jump, jump. jump or not. You know, it, it always it's always creeping up a little bit because mm -hmm. of just all these costs are attached to you know labor costs, health care, and it's just general inflation, but. This seems like it might be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Just a big number More compared to property yes. tax. I mean, you know, we talked about property taxes, oh, yeah. but this it's is another big number. Well, we <laughs> talked about, you know, we, we talked about, consol you know, to just digress right. a little bit, you talk yeah. about consolidation and the, the variance between village and town property taxes, which is significant. I think it's something like, what did we say, 350 or 375 or something like for average home. But if you turn that around, water rates probably, the town water rates are, are substantially higher mm -hmm. uh, than ours. So I don't know how it all washes out. It would be interesting to see how that all works out. And how, does it, how much is it going up in the town this year? If ours are going up, I'm assuming the town's is going up. Do we know the, the town, town is now? going up. Um, I don't remember the numbers. They face all the same. They face all the same problems. 
Um, except they have one other larger problem than uh, one larger issue. A lot of their septic, uh, a lot of their sanitation has to be pumped uphill to get to a place where it could then go downhill uh, through gravity. So they operate a lot more lift stations than the village does. So they have an operating cost above and beyond what you all have. Um, you're at the a lower end cost. and you're next to the plant. So most of your stuff is coming in by gravity. Um, they, are, um, they are experiencing some growth similar to you. They have uh, large scale projects that need to be upgraded to get more flow. Um, so, um, but we can get those numbers. But in general, if I remember correctly, uh, the village and the town are a little bit higher on the sanitation side and lower on the water side um, than other communities. So the village being built mostly built out, for instance, and is, dense. There, is there a way to, this came out somewhere, right? Is there a way to sell capacity to like a Williston? Or, or we don't have to get into that. Hold on, George. Hold on, George. Hold on, George. Hold on, George. In the past, uh, I believe the village just sold capacity to Williston one of the things that we would have to look at in a, a study is what is the total needs of the village and the town um, and then who you would you would have two customers assuming you don't merge with the, the town you'd have two customers in which you could sell capacity to which one would you go with and which one would you go with and but if we once merge, you we sell to, it we want to save that capacity yeah. for once you sell it you're not likely to get it back I have just some comparison figures. I have Dennis's memo. Um, the the town rates currently, so it's about twice as much. Well, it's so. Um, it's funny this just came up earlier. Their average user in, in this memo is 200 gallons a day, and ours is 120 gallons, um, which came up in an email yes. I answered earlier today. Yeah. Um, but that is a is one thousand one hundred dollars a year in the town versus our five hundred and eleven? So shift it a little bit because of usage. It's um, roughly hmm. the same then. No. If there's if there are two hundred and something for a thousand, we're one twenty for five hundred. Five hundred for one twenty. Fixed and variable. Right. So um, ours would change, but I can get. Yeah, it, yeah, so yeah. this is apples and oranges. So this yeah, might yeah. not be great, but yeah. I can definitely pull this together. But theirs is about a three percent increase. Or twenty-seven dollar a year increase mm -hmm. on the thing, on the thing, on the annual average user. Is that really is that true? Is that their average user eight percent it, more than us? Well, and so if if you want to think about it, or over an average, let's say you have an acre uh, plus of land and you want to water your lawn, mm -hmm. versus whatever we own in the village or somebody owns in the village, which is like a postage stamp. If you water each of them for 10 minutes, you're using five times more water than you are in the village. If you have a two bedroom home, and let's say you have mother, father, one child in the village, or two children, in the, one child in the village, and you have two or three children in a three bedroom, four bedroom in the town, you're gonna use more water. Um, it, it's just, but I would say that uh, one of the things that, uh, and I've talked to Dennis and others about this and Ricky, is I'd like to, one of these days, go back and look at those metrics and decide if those numbers are still holding true to how many gallons per water people are using. I, I've been in the water business for 30 years now. Since 2000-ish, we have seen water usage going down per household. As the price rises, the usage declines. Mm -hmm. Every hotel that is uh, of new vintage has water saving properties. They, they will pay you not to use the towels. They beg you not to use the towels. Um, some even incentivize it, they'll do certain things. I came from a village that had, had 1,100 hotel rooms. Um, a lot of places are not putting in pools anymore because of the total water usage and those costs. So 
it, it, it's interesting to see the village's growth, but we know where that growth is coming from. You just put 300 units in your downtown, you're going to get water growth. It's probably masking a decline overall. <clears throat> Sorry to be long-winded. That's okay. I can understand. <laughs> so I have some really good questions to take back and review and bring some answers back. And maybe make Warren come back with me as well. <laughs> <laughs> she loves this late meetings. <laughs> the risk of getting hit. So if we no. put in a... 100 to 150 new apartments over the next 10 years. Um, how's that gonna, I mean, I could probably figure this out on my own, but. No, that's that what you have for. Is that, or, or six or seven, we don't have to talk about that. Well, I, I'm on the, tri, I've, I've been on the Tri-Town Commission. I, I know a little bit about this. And so in terms of what Williston is, is getting from us, I mean, it, initially it is divided literally 30, 30, you know, 33, 33 between the three communities. Mm -hmm. And the village was was lowest down. I don't remember the actual percentages. So we sell our additional capacity to Williston every year, and it's, but it's a yearly contract. It's not like this is yours forever. It's understood. They they are growing. Williston is growing faster than than anybody right now. Uh, they're growing way faster than the town, and they're they're probably faster than the village in terms of residential units. It's. So eventually, but if we keep growing, we're going to have to take the capacity back from them. And the tricky piece is the state, probably it's questionable whether the state would allow, um, Williston right now, I would bet, would be absolutely willing to build their own waste water treatment plant if the state would allow. I don't think the state, I think the issue is the state won't give another permit. There are so many permits on the Winooski River and again, it goes, it gets higher. It's like the EPA standards say, you can have on, have only have so many entities discharging into a river this big in this situation and no more. And I think we're pretty much at that max. When you count all the wastewater treat plants that are on the Winooski starting with global foundries and going all the way into Burlington. And I don't think they'll, my understanding when we had discussions about this was that the state probably would not allow another plant to be, per so it's, to be permitted just for Williston, so um, it's it's going to be a crunch if both if all three of us keep developing, uh, you know. Well, from a cost for like you know for village, if we put more units in, that increases <clears throat> the fixed costs. Mm, no, not really. Not so much. No, the fixed no, costs no, are really. already at a certain point. Yeah. It, it yeah. will, but depending right. on where we what are that right. along that long fixed. Step. We have so, increased capacity. So if you think of, so if you think about it on the water side, you have a eight inch water main. And the eight inch water main serves all of what we have. Well, that part I get. Yeah. If you don't have to increase the size of the water main, you know, the next user is not as big a cost to us. You are then spreading the cost. Okay. In the future, when we have to replace a sewer main or something like that, that's when the cost so right now you're spreading that cost over all the users. Ultimately, as the age of the infrastructure comes, yeah. that's what you got. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we can talk more about this. We'll have we're going to have some more um, public hearings, yeah. uh, and we're going to have another public hearing on the twenty uh, fifth. Correct. That's correct. Yes, and then we will have to have another one in July as well. Yeah. Um, the last rate, the last two rates are the large water user rate, which is actually a decrease from the prior year, as a result of the decrease. There's a decrease in the proportionate share of the cost of unaccounted for water that global foundries will have to pick up. So we look at overall water usage and we divide that out between what <clears throat> they're using versus what the village is using and their proportionate share of that went down from like seven, 67 and change percent to 66 percent this year. We also had a, a big decrease in our unaccounted for water. So water that doesn't go through meters and then get billed. Uh, what causes this? fire hydrant usage for hydrant flushing or an actual fire, any major water main breaks. A year or two ago, we had the big one by anyone Main Street, we had like a million gallons of unaccounted for water. Okay, 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it was like being at the edge of the pond, like you were saying. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I was like, that's going to be a good analogy. Um, and so we, we actually, or the other thing, uh, fire training. So the only things that we had this fiscal year, because water, a uh, hydrant flushing happened last March, but it didn't happen in, or last May, but it didn't happen until June this year. So this period missed hydrant flushing. So we have a very low amount of, of unaccounted for water, plus a lower proportion of that that Global Foundries is gonna pick up. They also pick up 13% of the operating fund budget. Um, and then that all gets divided into their estimated usage, which is 3.4 million gallons per day, and to get their large user rate, and that has gone down slightly. Um, it was 0.079 last year, it's 0.075 this year. And all those spreadsheets were developed as part of the rate study. <coughs> and people smart with me and developed them. And then the wholesale wastewater treatment rate um, is also a slight increase, 5.7%, which is related just to the increase in the operating um, budget. And this is the rate charged to the town of Essex, the town of Williston, and to any septic haulers. So, any other questions that I can research and bring back the answers to? We're good. And it can only get better from this presentation. We're fine. We're good. <laughs> the future. I'm, I'm, much, I'm accustomed to being much more confident about the things I'm talking about. But well, don't, don't, get there. don't let Lauren psych you out. She's been doing this for years and years. Mm -hmm. She knows it like the back of her hand. Yeah. Yeah, she's got all those algorithms just like... Oh, she does. She's got all these all yeah. these words that I'm not familiar with yeah. yet. So... You did great. Thanks. That's where it stands. I will come back with um, a 10-year history. I will share the budget documents with Raj and Amber so you have those. Great. Um, and I will get comparative figures from surrounding communities using the same base of 120 gallons per day, which I do have... <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, and so I'll wrap it up by saying um, that I would recommend that uh, the trustees warn a public hearing uh, on the FY20 village utility rates for Tuesday, June 25th, two, uh, 2019. That's our, pub our public hearing for this. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Was that Dan or Raj second? Okay, so um, we are on to um, reappointment, appointment of boards, uh, committees, and commissions. And uh, Evan, do you want to go over that, or do you want us just, uh, what did you, what's your pleasure here? Um. I guess you have the memo inside the packet if there's any questions or thoughts on it. Um, I need to pull it up. It's after all of this um, stuff about water rates. Yeah. <laughs> I think we just, as I get it, it was just for the tree committee. Yeah, you have the village, village tree advisory committee. Okay. Um, Is there a motion? Yeah. Yes, please. I'll move that the Village Tree Advisory Committee, let's see, uh, move that we, the Village Trustees approve the reappointment of Rich Boyers and Tim Kemmerer, Kemmerer sorry, mm -hmm. I'm pronouncing that wrong, to three year terms to begin July 1, 2019. Second. Okay. Any, any uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And the next piece is. This is, this is uh, a recommend that the trustees have the village of Essex Junction participate. It, so do you want to explain this a little bit, um, give some background on this? Yeah. Um, sure. Thank you. Um, it's kind of... So the U.S. Census Bureau is part of, I believe, <clears throat> the Department of Commerce. And one of the changes that they're making this year is they want um, additional information uh, based on construction progress that's in progress uh, between uh, uh, 
after March 1, 2018, for completion at or around April 1st, 2020. Census day is in April of 2020, and they want to do as complete a count as they can, so they want information from the municipalities as to what properties may be occupiable finished by that date. Um, so they'd like us to uh, participate in the 2020 new construction program. Um, as a community, um, I think it's a wise thing to do to do whatever we can to help the Census Bureau get a complete count. Um, probably nothing the state does is going to get you a second uh, congressman, congresswoman. Uh, that will take over 720,000 residents. However, uh, federal funding is based upon population, it is based on a lot of factors, and uh, in meeting with the area census bureau chief, the state uh, could gain upwards of $14 million a year every year for the next 10 years if it gets its complete count up. They are currently estimating that Essex and Essex Junction could be as high as 14% undercounted yeah. to start. Mm -hmm. So anything that we can do to get um, people to answer the census, people to uh, understand what they're answering and why would be to the benefit of ourselves, Jindid County, and the state of Vermont. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion? Sure, I'll move that the trustees of the Village of Essex Junction participate in the 2020 Census New Construction Program designate the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission as Essex Junction's 2020 Census New Construction Program liaison. Second. Amber seconds. Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, so we are on to approval of the minutes. I have a comment on that before we do that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. The last meeting I was on May 28th, I was nowhere near Essex Junction, Vermont. So <laughs> it says I'm in, in attendance. But you were not. Meeting, but I was not. Spirit. So yeah, yeah, I was here in spirit. Yeah. It traveled across the ocean. And, yeah. Small <laughs> so that's a, that's a, like a not present. That's a slight amendment, and, yeah. and I, I just want to add one thing. I, I did specifically, and I don't necessarily have to amend the minutes to reflect this, but I did ask the question of why the Community Development Office, could we figure out why the Community Development Office is, is in charge of firework monitoring? I uh, tried to, I was baffled by that logic, and it doesn't, I don't need it, to, but as long as staff understands that that's, because we have, hmm? Noise too, right? Noise, yeah, why, why is, because you have the fire department in charge of handing out the permits, and then um, the, the community development office deals with the noise, the, 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 the well, repercussions of the right. you know, So, I mean, what, could we just get understanding what the logic here is? That's all. But I don't need, need it to be amended, but I just want to make sure we get that in. Um, so, anyway, any uh, other discussion? Any amendment to the minutes? So, we are, we're going to uh, move, I'll make a motion that we move, um, uh, that we um, uh, amend the minutes to reflect that. Uh, Dan Karen was indeed not present uh, at the meeting. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, can I take you back to 5D? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Hang on, I'm going to grab that in a second. So I'll then I'll I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as amended. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And so I think we need to go back to. All the way back to 5D because I uh, mistake I forgot to add uh, we had a fireworks display permit and so uh, Evan do you want to just quickly review this yes we are uh, annually we do the villages 4th of July fireworks display uh, for all those at home it is always on July 4th so if your pets do not like um, <clears throat> loud noises please make sure they understand that it is going to be on the 4th, that it will be in the dark, uh, probably starting around 9.30. And uh, they will be at Maple Street Park. Um, uh, we go through our display permit process. Chief Caborio is first. He 
ha uh, make sure they have a license. You in your particular handout, you don't see Chief uh, Gary's signature. His email today was as long as Chief Gaborio on this particular one is good, I'm good. Uh, we do plan for the safety of the site and the crowds. And then once the village board approves, then I sign it um, as approved. So um, this came through uh, just today uh, or yesterday. And instead of waiting two more weeks to make sure that it got an agenda, I was hopeful you guys would let me bring it tonight. Good idea. Um, yeah. All right. I'll move that the trustees approve the fireworks display permit for the Essex Junction Recreation and Parks 4th of July uh, fireworks display on July 4th, 2019 at approximately 9.30 p.m. Here a second. Raj seconds. Any further discussion? Any questions about this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Um, so Thank you. we'll move on to. Um, did you? No? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move on to. Um, okay. We need to approve the warrants. Okay. I will make a motion that we approve the warrants as presented. The check warrants. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so we're on to the reading file, and this is uh, board member comments. And uh, I, I'll start off by making one comment. So we are, we're, we have the um, governance subcommittee, um, but we're we're just already having a really difficult time finding just getting four four of us in the room together. Um, it's just scheduling. I think it'll ease up once the um, marketing company we hired sort of gets gets everything on track and gets things set up the way we think they you know we get to have complete agreement and they'll go forward but um, in anticipating this it it looks like there could be a, a, occasions over the next few months where you know they need to they need to have something corrected or they need to check in with with the, the two boards and um, so we have to they have to call a meeting and uh, these meetings have to be warned two days ahead of time and so I'm gonna I'm gonna propose I won't propose it now I think we do this at our had to do this at our joint meeting when both the boards are together but I'm just gonna put it out there that I think we probably need to um, have al alternate members to the subcommittee uh, I'm sorry and I don't I don't anticipate that you'd necessarily be uh, drafted but like we sure could have used one this week and the select board sure could use one this week. You need three members to two. So I, I'm going to say, so just keep it in mind, because I think at our next joint meeting, I'm going to ask to have this put on the agenda so that, and I would say we have alternate one, alternate two, alternate three. So that means you and you and Andrew would be, you'd have to figure out which ones you want to do, but. Uh, that doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah. So, oh, it I, does. so, um, so, but I just, just keep it on your mind. Andrew got elected; he was not here. We could make Andrew okay. Maybe we should do it now. <laughs> I'm gonna nominate Andrew. Andrew. I second. I second him. Right. Not Done. Me. Sorry, not on the agenda. All right. Yeah. No, it's not on the agenda. But I just wanted to mention that. Um, that so the work is is progressing, but it's it's uh, it's at a point where they 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 you know we're really back that if we really want to get uh, they need. Altogether, approximately 16 weeks, so to get the, the the scope of work that we gave to them done. So every week that we delay on this end because we can't get people together is a week on the back end, less time that we have to process all the information they're going to produce and turn it into sort of a consolidation concept. So anyway, we'll talk about it next week. Other comments, trustee comments. I'm I know I emailed you about this. I don't know if it's appropriate for board comments, but I'm wondering about, I never heard back, I'm wondering about the super exciting issue of laying and crosswalk striking. When are we going to start to see the public works folks out there fixing cross oh. and crosswalks and striping streets? I, I know, I, I, okay, I will I double just, check tomorrow, but I know that I believe they are just getting started. Right. But that's great. I know it's still kind of early based on the season we had, but. No, um, it's, they're all in, as everybody knows, terrible, yeah, it terrible is. shape. And yeah, it'd be great to get it done sooner later, I guess. But. Yeah. Did you see crosswalks against sidewalks? Right? Stri uh, stri 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 striping. 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 
Usually it's the crosswalks and, and hatchings. Um, and I will also mention that we, I had mentioned a while back that did we want to, um, because the landlord across the street or the owner of the property across the street is generously allowed uh, public parking on his property and we put a path in from the back to the main street that we might want to landscape but in, in there. But it looks like what I'm getting from this and I understand what Robin said was that Firebird is going to be landscaping, landscaping it themselves. So, great. Is that is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because it's kind of. It, I wasn't it's sure if it was that area or if you were talking about kind of in here. I was talking about no. I was talking about this. Okay. Generally, right. maybe a little bit di different orientation, but it looks great from you know whatever this is ten thousand feet. Right. When you're right over there, it's yeah. it's pretty nasty. And Just it's to see what they do, and then you know see yeah. what they put in, and then kind yeah. of bring it back if we need to. Yeah. You know? Okay, so I just wanted to that's why take I that. asked Robin to do an aerial and a drawing so people understood, understood what was what. I'll take it. I'll take it off the, the charts for right now. We'll see what happens over there. Okay. Other comments? I just uh, just to let you all know that you know we are working on the Crescent connector. And we're going to have a public hearing. It, it should be no um, shock that a, the two. Property owners that we haven't uh, obtained easements when one has sent us an objection. I can, you know, uh, we're working through the legal process with them, but we did get a, a letter of objection um, with questions and comments. Um, so uh, it shouldn't be that surprising. Um, but they've hired an attorney, and our village attorney will work through the process um, with them. As well, and we're still scheduled to have that hearing. Um, Raj, do you want to just quickly mention what your your email from the bike walk? Committee? Oh, um, yeah. So we because of well, there's a few changes. We have a new there's a new chair on the bike walk committee, um, Micah Hagen. Uh, Kathy Shearer is the vice chair. Um, I have stepped down uh, from the committee at the end of the month. Um, I can't do that, this, and the governance subcommittee. Um, but I'm still going to stay pretty involved with them. Um, <clears throat> they've got some interesting stuff coming, uh, suggestions coming up. They were looking at um, mid road crosswalk markers for some of our busiest crosswalks. Um, our visibility is an issue just based on the volume of traffic we have. It's any, any help you can get. Those aren't intended to be four season. Yep. You know, you've seen them, they're kind of freestanding weighted mm -hmm. clipboards. and the, I just want Rick Jones to understand we do not mean for them to be in the winter. Um, <laughs> like I said, should we separate email, making sure that was clear for him. Um, we're, they're hoping to do that. They're really working on the, uh, Evan has asked for a master rapid reflector beacon plan before we ask for any more of those. Um, and they're, they're working pretty hard. They did a I community mean, bike. They, we're, they rode the whole community Sunday morning at like 7 a.m. Okay. They made a list and, and did a bunch of, so they're getting that data together and trying to put something together for them. Um, again, getting and getting more than two people together at any one time is <laughs> Sunday morning. At, yeah. We were looking, and I was looking for a prioritization right. so that when we go for grant monies, right. we are going after our number one priorities, not just because somebody thinks a crosswalk is at a great place or is be able, these are looked at by our committee and said A, B, C. And, they, and, and you know, they're, they're and also they looking great at other options because those yeah. are expensive. So. Yeah. If there's another solution to that particular spot, they're going to try to mm -hmm. offer options. Um, the other thing that came up in that last meeting was, um, and it, it was mentioned here a few months a month ago, was um, looking into um, expanding because we're there's now a couple openings again. Um, looking into maybe uh, working with the select board and mixing these up a little bit. So, and I know in a drive by I had with Darren when you guys were out looking at that property. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe it makes sense to start talking about more working more closely with the trails committee, and then having um, the conservation committee. You know, working more with the tree. You know, trying to figure out how we can leverage the entire community because you know it's not just village residents that come through here and walking and biking. So um, I'd love to have that conversation as a uh, board set of boards and see. I mean, they're not see if there's interest in that. They're not charter. Based, right, so 
Um, if I were just members more, more volunteers or reduce the need for as many volunteers. That's good. So, mm -hmm. uh, that, was, that came up. Everybody on the bike walk committee at least was interested in that. Um, almost everybody we've talked to that's approached the committee to see if they can serve on it some time in the last two years. Right. So mm -hmm. it's sort of, sort of interesting. Yeah. But that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay. We're good. Um, last thing would be the upcoming meeting schedule. Evan, do you want to go over that? Anything in particular you need to point out? No. We, that's generally what we put on our, uh, maybe uh, one quick note. You can see that it is color-coded. Um, so because of village meeting, town uh, select board meeting, and joint meeting, three colors, um, I should also inform you as to potentially what building that meeting is in. Sometimes we show up at the wrong building, and we work here every day. Uh, but that's what it. But that's the update schedule as we know it. Um, thank goodness for Tammy; she puts this together. Um, and so that's it. We have a lot of meetings. Yes. Um, yes. It is incredibly hard to merge two communities legally. <laughs> like, can we do it illegally? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you have an option here that, another way. That quick enough? <laughs> no, there is no <laughs> other option <laughs> illegally. Like a motion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. Okay. We have Great. a lot of committees running around. I move we adjourn. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you. Aye.